Hi guys, after going through the lesson of partial derivatives, let's now move on to how are we going to evaluate these partial derivatives. We went through the concepts, the definitions of what these partial derivatives mean. But for now, we're going to go through the methods and the techniques of how are we going to evaluate them. Okay, when I give my lessons of differential calculus or basically of, of this analysis course, I always like to divide them into two sections. You know, one of them, we deal with the ideas, the concepts, the theorems, you know, theoretically, conceptually, what these ideas means. And after that, we move on to the techniques and the methods of doing carrying out this certain process so the process we are con concerned with today is evaluation of partial derivatives okay so the evaluation of partial derivatives follows ordinary calculus see it's kind of easy it just follows ordinary calculus with just one exception one is always differentiating a function of one variable the other being treated as a constant okay this is like a key statement right here the other being treated as a constant now remember when we're dealing with partial derivatives essentially we're dealing with functions of more than one variable so if we want to apply the the methods of ordinary calculus we do that to one variable and now since it's partial derivatives we treat the other variables as a constant okay so let's just go through certain examples you know and see what we get so example number one okay so we have this function over here w is equals to x uh, uv plus u minus 2v okay so i never labeled the function but let's just say we just call the function um let's just say h okay and it's in terms of x u and v x u and v okay so right now what we have is a function of three variables x u and v and we want to take the partial derivatives now, like we said before, ordinary calculus, you know, we can only differentiate them, you know, as by treating the function as a function of one variable and the other being as constants, okay? So, obviously, I'll pick one of them to treat as the variable I'm differentiating with respect to, and the other two I treat as a constant. Very simple indeed. So, the first one, let's partial differentiate w in terms of x. So, you know, short form, I say partial w partial x. So, I have the x over here, and there's, there's no x somewhere else. So, let's see. If this is a constant, and if this is a constant, and if I partially differentiate a constant with respect to x, what do I get? I get zero, right? There's no x term over here, so this basically has zero. What about this over here? Now, u and v treated as a constant. Now, when I differentiate a constant multiplied by x, I will just simply get the constant itself. So the answer to this over here would be uv. Okay, partial differentiate w with respect to x. Now moving along, I can do the same for the other two variables. So this time, I'll partial differentiate w in terms of u. I have a u over here, I have a u over here. So what I ultimately get when I treat the x and v as constants, I will get a x v plus 1. Okay, the constant over here is 1, 1 multiplied by u. So partial differentiate with respect to u, I get 1. And the constant over here is x and v. Okay, now this is also a constant, 2v is also a constant, but when I partial differentiate it with respect to u, I get 0. So the answer is uv plus 1. And finally, if I were to partial differentiate w in terms of v, I will get x, u, take away 2. Okay, as you can see, the constant, there's a minus 2v over here, partial differentiate with respect to v, I get 2. Okay, now I just want to introduce the alternative notations, you know, we can also write um, wv, okay, I mean partial w, partial v, I write w subscript v, or I write hv, okay, but sometimes you want to avoid all these subscripts when we're dealing with vectors, okay, because when we deal with vectors, sometimes we've got the function, let's just say f, components um, x, or components y or components uh, z okay when we're dealing with vectors these sometimes represent components and not partial derivatives so when we're dealing with vectors sometimes we just want to explicitly write this our uh, partial w partial v okay very nicely indeed so moving on to example two okay now things this is where my previous lesson you know we need to take extra care when we're dealing with three or more variables oh sorry uh, more than three variables okay so this time i have four variables okay more than three u v x and y okay and they are related by this equation over here okay u is equal to x minus y b is equal to x plus y so as always when i partially differentiate u with respect to x okay what i'll get is just basically one okay y is not treated as a constant it gets removed it gets equal to zero and partial differentiate v with respect to x i also get one okay now what you see over here is this explicit notation to tell the reader communicate to the reader which is the variable we're holding as a constant in this case we're holding y as a constant that's why i have this you know bracket subscript y and i have this best bracket subscript y over here because when i partially differentiate with respect to x i'm holding y constant i did not do it to these equations over here but i explained why you know um i, I could or i could not have done it Whereas, I can also partial differentiate u with respect to v, okay? Sorry, it's partial differentiate u with respect to x. But this time, instead of holding y constant, I will hold v constant. Okay, now, how, is, how does this work out? Well, look at this. V, okay, these are two separate equations that the problem gives me, right? And I know that 
x and y are the independent variables and from values of x and y I get dependent variables u and v. So right now if I were to hold v constant, basically I'm adjusting values of x and y such that v is a constant. Okay? I'm adjusting values of x and y so that v is a constant, but by adjusting these independent variables, I'm also adjusting the value of u. So I can hold this as constant. I mean, just look at it. Maybe x and y can increase at the same rate. V is held as constant, but I'll still partially differentiate uh, u with respect to x. As you can see over here, holding v constant. Is this possible? Yes, it is. How do I do that? Well, basically, I just rearrange for y. So y is equal to, um, that would be v take away x. Okay, and I'll substitute this back inside here. U U now becomes x subtract this, so it's basically 2x subtract v. See, so now I've written u in terms of x and v, and I can partially differentiate that in terms of x holding v constant, okay? But by simply doing the partial differentiation on this function over here, rewritten in terms of x and v, and that will just give me 2 over here. Okay, yeah, correct, 2 over here because um, this is treated as a constant, it gets removed. Now I do the same for this over here, I still get um, an answer. The answer would be, just give me a second, um, 2 also, okay? So this time I'm partially differentiating V in terms of X holding U constant, I'll just rearrange the same thing uh, and just write uh, V in terms of x and u okay now so what about if i were to just do the same things over here tell the reader which variables i'm holding constant for this okay as you can see i'm partially differentiating with respect to x i'm holding if you guess it u and v constant okay u and v if i'm partially differentiating with respect to u i'm holding x and v constant and if i'm partially differentiating with respect to v i'm holding u and x constant okay all this is just basically explicitly telling the reader which variables we're holding constant this case is two variables because now the function is defined in terms of three variables partial differentiate with respect to one hold the other two constant this case the dependent variable is written in terms of two variables so when you partial differentiate one we're holding the other variable constant Right, and lastly, as you know, we just pick something from your implicit differentiation, we can also implicit partial differentiate, okay? For example, now I got these three variables rewritten as this expression over here. Now, I'm at liberty to rearrange z in terms of x and y, but sometimes it's too difficult to do that. So I'm going to partial differentiate with respect to x. What I'll simply get is 2x, okay? This treat that as a constant, okay? I'll subtract. Now, partial differentiate z in terms of x, knowing that I could have rearranged z in terms of x and y, but I don't want to do that because this form is nicer. I could have rearranged to that. If I partial differentiate with respect to um, x, the function z, what I get is that first differentiate this, okay, in terms of z to z, and then I'll partial differentiate that with respect to x. Partial z, partial x, and this is equals to zero. Okay, now this I just briefly went through. It's just basically using the implicit differentiation, but now since we are partially differentiating, I'm just doing everything, but I'm holding y as fixed, okay? But you know, we, we do not want to go into that because really there's a whole theor theorem behind this involving chain rules, uh, implicit functions, which I want to develop for the point. So anyways, this is what we have over here. Simple methods of partial differentiating, just basically holding the other variables as constants, doing normal, ordinary calculus, and sometimes explicitly telling the reader which variables we're holding constant by writing them as subscripts okay easy lesson easy lesson indeed okay and obviously the product when chain rules apply implicit functions we'll go more into that okay so yeah just stay tuned for the next video thank you